Well, good morning, church. Great to have you along for the ride this morning. Aren't you just so thrilled to be here? Great to have you here. We are in week two of a series we kicked off last week called Close Encounters. More on that in just a second. Just as a reminder, 21 days, prayer and fasting, everybody. It's just a great season for us. And uh, so you're like, well, I wasn't here last week. I wasn't here when it started. You can jump in at any point. 6 a.m. prayer, Monday, Tuesday. I'll be here tomorrow, 6 a.m., ready to go, weather permitting. I'll talk about that in just a second. Thursday, Friday, 6 a.m. We keep the 7 p.m. Wednesday service for those that can't join us in the morning. How many of you enjoy Wednesday night diving a little more deeply on, on the fasting idea, just kind of teaching you in that space? Because of the weather, I just want to let you know how we're going to communicate with you. If you do not have the church app, take out your phone right now, scan the QR code. We're going to communicate with you via the app and via social media. So we're trying to communicate with you, but if you don't do the things we're using to communicate with you, you won't know. You'll show up here, and, and I'll probably be here no matter what. But we just want to communicate with the church at large that we're actually meeting or not meeting. I don't know if there's going to be snow. How many know how many times they forecasted snow, and we got nothing. So, I mean, we'll just see how that, that goes tomorrow. When you walked in, there were some prayer request cards on your seat. Those weren't just uh, like reserved seating. Those are for you to fill out because every morning we're praying over those requests. Right now, over 300 requests that are on this platform every morning that we're praying over in the life of the church. And even if you're a guest and you just say, man, I would love for some people to be praying over that over these 21 days, fill it out, drop it in uh, the container on the way out. And then let me just mention this. At the end of our 21 days, we're going to have a worship encounter. And what I'm most excited about, water baptisms, everybody. Just love everyone taking their step there. And if you've never done that, you can scan the QR code. That'll take you straight to the registration place. And we'd love to serve you in that way. I just am firmly a believer that one of those powerful things you could ever experience in your life is an encounter with an almighty, all-powerful, living God. Can I hear an amen right there? And I just, as during our worship time, I just thought, oh, Lord, may they encounter you in a new way. Of course, the thesis on this whole uh, series, the theme, the idea is that we need an encounter, not just an explanation, meaning that God is not just a God that is to be understood in our minds. But is he is to be one that we need to encounter and experience in a real way. Hey, everybody, you don't just need more information in your mind. Like, information's never changed anyone's life. Transformation by an encounter with God changes your life. And that's what we're trying to kind of prompt you towards. Some of us, you know, you keep waiting for the, the debate to convince you or the sermon to convince you. Or maybe you're like, well, man, this is what I was always raised and this is kind of what I'm depending on. And we look at other people that have an encounter. It kind of frustrates us a little bit because we know... We can't live off of their encounter, and yet we see God doing something in their life, and we want it so badly in ours, but you have to experience him for yourself. It would be like if you had never in your life had a Krispy Kreme donut when the hot and now light was on. I'm talking like straight off the conveyor belt. Who knows what I'm talking about now? Like right, like melt in your mouth, straight from the throne room of heaven, marriage supper of the lamb, Krispy Kreme donut. That's what I'm talking about. I could try to convince you. I could try to explain that to you. Or how many of you just want to go right now? Let's just get in the car. And let's go to Krispy Kreme. Let's take your... And when you put that in your mouth, nothing that I could have explained will do that for you. You have to have your own experience with God. And some of us are frustrated because we see other people having encounters and experiences. And a lot of us, though, we've confined God to a mental engagement. It's an explanation about him rather than an experience with him. And you have to move beyond an understanding of your mind because until you truly encounter him, you won't understand or be able to grasp his love, his compassion, his kindness, how awesome our God is. And maybe this is news for some of you today. God actually wants to encounter you. Like he wants to meet with you. And what we learned last week is that God often uses strange ways to get our attention. He has unique ways of kind of interrupting and disrupting our lives. Now, I also believe that we have a role in the encounters. And we have to be open and flexible because the encounters look different. How many know there's not a cookie cutter formula for encountering God? Like we see this all throughout scripture. And I think this is how denominations get formed because they see how God, someone experiences God and like, well, that's how everyone has to experience God. Let's start a new denomination. It's like, no, God is actually bigger than that. He can encounter you in different ways. And I'm not against denominations, but that's how it happens. 
They, you know, it, back in Moses' day, they would, just, they would have started the first church of the burning bush because that's the way it has to happen right there. And we're just waiting for that to happen. And, and we actually limit God based upon the experiences that other people have. He came in a burning bush. He came blinding light from heaven, mighty rushing wind, cloud by day, fire by night. How about this? We soaked through it today. Elijah's story, just in a whisper. He like, he, he didn't come in the earthquake he didn't come in the wind. He didn't come in the fire. That was the original earth, wind, and fire right there in 1 Kings 19. That wasn't, that wasn't their idea. That was God's idea. By the way, you'll hear me talk about soaping uh, throughout the message today. Soaping is just a way that we read scripture. It's just kind of a template. As a church body, we read a chapter a day, and it's based upon what we learn on Sundays, and then you get to dive more deeply into it during the week. Come on, all you soapers. Tell them what it stands for. It stands for scripture, observation, application, and prayer. It's just a template by which we read scripture. You can get a hard copy. You can download that right from the app. And I just got to gotta make a confession because the story that I was going to tell and the encounter that I was going to teach on today is not the one that the, the Lord wanted me to teach on. So a few days ago, he changed it. Now, how many, how many know I can teach on encounters and being flexible when God wants to do something different, but then I got to actually do it myself sometimes. And I was actually going to teach on the Elijah encounter. That God comes in this still, small voice because I think sometimes we want the dynamic and sometimes he comes in the whisper. But I, but I felt like the Lord said, no, I don't think that's what you're supposed to teach on. Because I speak in all kinds of ways. Now, you're going to soak through this. I've still found a way, though, to keep your soap readings in your readings and in the message, everybody. Thank you so much, Pastor Devin. You're so great. You're going to soak through this tomorrow. God speaks in different ways. And how many have seen that? So it's not a matter of whether or not he's speaking. It's a matter of not if we recognize his voice. That's why Jesus said, you'll soak through this on Thursday. He said, you got to recognize my voice. If you want to know me, you got to be more familiar with my voice. And so we have a role in these encounters. Today we're looking at this incredible encounter, the one that the Lord really led me to, based on a character. And the reason I felt like he, he kind of shifted the focus was because I felt like there were so many of us that could relate with this encounter and the person that was coming to the encounter. And it's the person of Jacob. Jacob's encounter. He was the grandson of Abraham. No pressure there. You know, I mean, it's like, how do I keep on living the legacy? You're like, that guy, the father of our faith, you know? How many remember Sunday school? Father Abraham. And this is the grandson of that guy. Good luck. And then the, you know, the calisthenics was on. <laughs> Jacob was uh, the second born twin of Isaac and Rebekah. And Esau, his older brother, was born just seconds before him. The Bible says that when Esau came out of the womb, Jacob was holding on to his heel when he was delivered. Like, even from the very beginning, he's trying to hold back his brother. And be first. The Bible says there was a sibling rivalry while they were still in the womb. The language the Bible says they were jostling within her, it says. How many would like to have carried that pregnancy? No, thank you. And Jacob's life was marked by struggle. Like, life never seemed to come easy for Jacob. And that's one of the reasons why I felt like the Lord led me to this encounter. Because I think a lot of us are like, it's just not coming easy for me. I see other people. I see what they're experiencing. And it just, it's a struggle for me. Life is a struggle. And maybe it's, maybe it's in your faith. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's in your marriage, in your relationships. Maybe it's in the clarity of your future. Maybe it's in your identity. You just, there's a struggle. And there's a wrestling going on inside of you. Hey, look, listen to me. God can settle the wrestling if... If you take a step and actually allow him to do the work in you. So let's pick up the story. If you want to add, this is the one that's not in there. If you want to add to your soap reading, add Genesis 32, because that's the encounter we're looking at. Here's what it says. So Jacob was left alone. Now just time out right there. Because it's often in the moments when we feel alone and desperate that God goes, they need me most. He's close to the brokenhearted. He's near to those who are crushed in spirit. And in an alone, desperate place, he meets a man. And he wrestled with him until daybreak. Now, let me just talk to you about this man theologically a little bit. As we study scripture, we see these appearances of God in human form. I'll give you just another example out of scripture. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They throw him in the fiery furnace. 
There were three that we threw in. We look in, there's a fourth man walking around in the fire. What is that? In theology, we call that a Christophany. It's where Jesus actually steps out of the throne of heaven and plays a role in human history. And most theologians believe that's what happened with with Jacob here. So whether it's Jesus or not, it's definitely someone representing God in some form. Whether it's an angel of God, maybe it's Jesus himself, wrestling with Jacob until daybreak. And watch what it says. And when the man, representing God, saw that he could not overpower Jacob, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip. So that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Jacob was fighting so hard against God that God actually had to touch him in a way that crippled him. Let me say it a different way. God had to touch him in such a way that it got his attention and slowed him down. Now, I know none of you can relate with that. I know none of you have fought against what God would want to do in your life. But God sometimes, listen, I've watched people struggle so greatly with God. And God sometimes has to do some things in our lives to get our attention and slow us down. And this is what he does because he wants to encounter us. (laughs) The man said, I'm done with you, Jacob. It's daybreak. I've done all I can do. I've done enough work in your life right now. I've touched you enough. And Jacob responds with what what has been a prayer of mine and I'm hoping becomes a prayer of you I am not letting go unless and until you bless me I am not going another year with that issue I'm not going another year with my family fractured and broken. I'm not going another year dependent upon that substance. I'm not going another year living anxious and afraid. I'm I'm not going another year without community and close friends. I'm not living another year with no purpose and no clarity on my identity. I'm not letting go. Come on, that needs to be a prayer in someone's life. And you're going to have to make the decision to allow God to do a work inside of you. I'm not letting go. Go. I'm just going to keep waking up at 5 a.m. and coming to prayer. I knew that wouldn't get a big amen, but I'll say it again. (laughs) I'm just going to keep waking up at 5 a.m. and showing up at 6 a.m. If God doesn't touch me on day 9, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to show up on day 10. I'm not letting go. And it takes that type of faith to actually engage with God in such a way that you experience all that he is. I love, I love God's response. What's your name? And he gives them the answer. He says, my name is Jacob. And the reason I highlighted that is because God's basically saying, tell me who you are. Tell me how you define yourself. Tell me the label that you've assumed. Tell me the things that you're letting guide your life. And tell me the things that you've actually taken on. And now you're living out something that was put on you. Jacob's name means trickster or deceiver. In the Old Testament, uh, another translation would be heel grabber. In other words, I'm going to do whatever I can do to pull someone else down. I'll do whatever I have to do. Lie, cheat, deceive, manipulate. That, and he says to God, that's who I am. My life is full of deceit and full of lies. That's who I am and that's who I will always be. And some of you have responded that way to God when he's actually wanted to move in your life. He wants to encounter you. He wants to bless you. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is who I am. This is who my family's always been. We've always struggled with that. Divorce runs in our family. That's just the way it's going to be. Addiction runs in our family. This is who we are. This is who we're always going to be. And God's going, I want to bless you. But you're going to have to make a decision and take a step. And he responds, no, 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 no. Your name is no longer Jacob, but your name is Israel, which means one who sees God, one who struggles with God. Another translation would say, the one that God perseveres in. I love that. And even when some of you hear that, you're like, well, good for Jacob. But could you understand that you actually don't have to live the way that you've been settling for, that you no longer have to settle for a lackluster marriage? That you no longer have to settle for mediocrity. Hey, look right, look like right here. Listen, you don't have to live with that habit. You actually don't have to just resign yourself to living with that addiction. You don't have to have that label superimposed on you and live in alignment with a lie. Like you, you don't have to live that way. You no longer, your life can actually change. Does anyone believe that this morning? That God can actually change Your life, the old has passed away. Behold, I'm making all things new. How am I no longer going to be that way? Well, because 
<laughs> you wrestled the right way. And now that I'm wrestling with God, I'm getting him involved. And when I get God involved, I can ultimately overcome. And this is the encounter. You're wrestling with God. And Jacob said, well, back at you. What's your name? <laughs> and God doesn't even answer his question. Hey, sometimes we're asking God the wrong question. I mean, if God would have answered the question, that would have kind of given us the sign that that's the right question to ask. But does it, he doesn't even acknowledge the question. And sometimes some of us aren't taking a step towards God because we're more concerned about the questions we have being answered than actually getting the blessing from God. I mean, to know more, to understand more, it is in a lot of us, it's, it's our inclination. We'd rather check all the boxes, know all the things, how's this going to look, how's this going to work, and then I'll take this step. And he's like, would you just stop that and let me bless you? which Jacob ultimately does, and he called the place Peniel, which means meeting with God, and he says, it is because I saw God. Here it is. Come on, say these three words. Face, and that's the goal. That's the goal, that we would move from the wrestling to face to face, and I just was so compelled that somebody who's been in a struggle, you've been in a wrestling match, that your life could not only be spared but change. And so here's my thesis for this message, and that is this. Many of us are wrestling between who we've become and who we're supposed to be. You're in a wrestling match. And the wrestling match is the life that you've settled for that you're currently living and the life that you know in your heart of hearts God actually has for you. And it causes attention. And when you look at the life of Jacob, you see him wrestling with some things. And I could see the things he was wrestling with as relating to so many people that Ashley and I get to sit with and minister to, a lot of us are, first of all, wrestling with our past. I think too many of us are letting that thing that happened keep us from taking a step towards a different future. Like, the thing that happened, the pain, the wounding, the hurt, the mistake, has become the limiter of your life. It's become the lid of your life. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I gave up on that. I can't go back and correct that. I can't believe I didn't finish that. I can't believe I made that mistake. I can't believe I said that. How did I end up here? And we spend all of this mental and emotional energy thinking about how to get, like, how did we get here, rather than thinking, maybe God wants to take me somewhere else. So here's the way I like to think about it. Could you get to Chattanooga from Nashville through Knoxville? Okay, some of you that don't know maps, yes, you can. It's not the fastest way. It's probably not the way that someone would recommend. It's going to add about three hours onto your time. And some of us understand what I'm saying because some of us have taken the long route. How many know what I'm talking about? You took the, I took the long route, and you ended up in the wrong city, and the enemy came and said, you'll never get back to the original destination. But listen to me. God actually can still turn it around. But some of us, we're so focused on every wrong turn that we've taken, we've actually forgotten about the original destination that we were headed. We're using our energy in the wrong direction, focused on every mistake, every misstep. And like Jacob, some of us have assumed a label. By the way, that was a label, a name he didn't even choose. But he started to live in alignment with a label that he didn't even choose. And for some of you, the mistake has become the label. And now the mistake you made, the hurt that happened, the pain that happened has become the identity of your life. You got to hear this. We cannot go back and change the beginning, but we can start right where we are and change the ending, everybody. That can be a reality for you. God, he's never changed his mind about you. He's never given up on you. People will change their minds on you. God is never done with you. He's always working to fulfill his plan in your life. I don't care how far off course you think you are. I love this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 4. I, I'm just, I highlighted the words that sometimes we'll just skip over. But if, come on, say these two words out loud. If from there, from where? From where you are right now. Wherever you are right now. I don't know where you are. I don't know where your finances are. I don't know where your marriage is. I don't know how many mistakes you've made. I don't know what label you've been assuming. But if from there, wherever you are, if you will seek the Lord, watch, he's waiting. You will find him. He's not playing cat and mouse with you. He's waiting for you to take a step. If from there, I just decided I'm going to prayer tomorrow. 
I know, no one's going to be excited about that right there. But what if right from where you're at, you decided, if from here I'm soaping for the 21 days of prayer and fasting, I'm going to seek God with all of my heart. If from here you decided I'm leading a connect group this semester, what, what if you just took a step wherever you are? You just decided. I mean, it's, it's the line we hear at weddings, right? What's the, what's the line you hear at weddings? From this day forward. I, mean, I know I dated all those people, all those losers. <laughs> I know I gave them emotional energy. I know I gave them some things that maybe I shouldn't have given them. But from this day forward forward. I know I, I know I did that in my past. I know I made that mistake, but by God's grace from this day forward, I just came to declare someone needs a from this day forward type of attitude to take a step. Forget the former things. Quit dwelling on the past. God says, watch, I am doing, that's present tense. I am doing a new thing. And watch, the Bible says in a little bit of frustration, don't you see it? And we sing it. Oh, I've witnessed that. I've seen that. Oh, the faithfulness of God there. Listen, he's doing it for you. He's making a way. I am doing a new thing. And I just felt like I needed to tell someone this morning to not park at the place of your pain. Drive toward your destiny. Some of us, we've let the pain become the place where our life has stopped. Like, we just put it in park. Our life has been in park. We were driving along just fine. And then that thing happened, and we decided to pull over and just put it in park. And people are coming by, and they're like, hey, can I help you? Hey, uh, you need a ride? I'll take you to the next exit. Hey, anything I can do for you? Oh, no, 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 no. I wish I could, but I have this thing. And this has become my whole life and my identity. I wish I could go, but I'm parked right here around that. Well, you don't have to. No, no, no. This has kind of been my life. Now, hey, everybody, get back in the car and put it in drive. God has a destination in mind that he would love to take you to. You have a role in the encounter. Here's the second wrestling match that's going on, and that is the wrestling with our secrets. <laughs> I've heard it said, you're only as sick as your secrets. Because what others don't know about you and the things that you're hiding and concealing. I mean, Jacob was a deceiver. And he didn't start out being a deceiver. He was named deceiver. And he found himself aligning with a label that was put on him. And he so badly wanted his father's blessing. But here's the challenge with that. The oldest always got the blessing. Now, that wasn't favoritism in families, God actually put that in place because if something were to happen to the patriarch, the oldest actually had to step into the responsibility of manage everything for the family. Now, how many want the blessing now? Like, but Jacob wasn't making that correlation. I just want the blessing. I, I want him to bless me. The Bible says that when Esau came out of the womb, I was reading it again last night, it said he was red and hairy, like a wookie right out of the womb. This is awesome. <laughs> what am I doing with that? Yeah. And Jacob wants his birthright. Esau was an outdoorsman, kind of a guy's guy, hunter. And Jacob was, he was into other things. He was just the opposite. And so when Jacob wanted his father's blessing, he actually says to his older brother, sell me your birthright. And he offers him something to eat in exchange for the blessing. And Esau takes the deal. Listen to me. For a temporary, immediate gratification, Esau gives up the blessing. For a temporary appetite to be fulfilled, he gives up the blessing. This is what Adam and Eve did in the garden. For a temporary appetite, gratification, they give up the blessing of living in the garden. Let me say it a different way. They gave up their dominion. They gave up God being the favor surrounding them. And Adam and Eve lost their dominion when they fed their appetite. And some of us, we're frustrated, we're wrestling, we're struggling because we're not experiencing victory and dominion here. But the problem is we keep giving into the appetites of this world and we won't set them aside. And you actually are saying no to the dominion and victory you could have in Christ rather than feeding your appetites. Yeah. That's what this season is about, actually. 
That's why I'm, I'm a, whether you do food or not, I'm always encouraging people, lay something down that actually could be a distraction to you experiencing God's best for your life. Jacob convinces his brother, but now he has a problem because he needed his father to actually put his hands on him and bless him. Well, his brother was hairy, and so he got, out, he got some fur from some animals. That's a hairy guy now. If you get some fur from animals and people think it's actually a person. And his ailing father, who was struggling with sight, felt the arms. He tricks his dad, and he blesses the pretender. Jacob technically gets what he wanted and is miserable after he got it. I'll tell you why. Because he had to pretend to be someone he wasn't to get it. And some of us, listen, you pretending to be someone you're not to get the thing you think will satisfy you. And when you get it, you're miserable because you had to pretend to be someone that God didn't call you to be to get it. I soaked through this two, day, two days ago. I, I, uh, I read a proverb a day as well, whatever day of the month it is. I read that proverb. And I was reading through. I knew at this point that I was going to be teaching on this story. And this verse just jumped off the page. Proverbs chapter 12, a couple days ago. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be a somebody. Then pretend. Hello, social media. My goodness. I, when I read it, I thought, oh, yes, I'm the great pretender. Anybody know the platters, anybody? <laughs> Pretending that I'm doing well. <laughs> Living my best life. Problem with that is I'm sitting with that couple on the verge of divorce. But when they pretend to be somebody they're not, and they actually get what they think will appease the tension, it doesn't. Because God doesn't bless who we pretend to be. You got to get that. You're expecting him to bless something that isn't real. God has something for you that's rooted in your identity in him. Proverbs 28, I love this. Whoever conceals, hides, pretends, doesn't prosper. But the person that just goes, you know what? This is who I really am. God, and I'm renouncing the things that I've been distracted by. Whoever conceals, doesn't prosper. King David, you remember when King David like totally blew it, messed up? And watch what he says. When I refused to confess, and that's where some of us are at today. You just refuse. You're frustrated. You're wrestling, but you're refusing. And can I tell you, you got to step into that if you want to settle the wrestling. My body, listen to him. See if this doesn't sound like a wrestling match. My body's wasting away. Groaned all day and night. Night and day. Something heavy on me. My strength evaporated. Like, He's in a wrestling match all because he's pretending, hiding, concealing. But finally, I confess all my sins and stop pretending. And I said to myself, I will confess. And watch, what's waiting for him? Finally, I've been waiting for you to realize what stupid mistake that was. I can't believe you did that. No. God forgives and he removes. He forgives and he removes. And you think that's waiting for you? That's what the enemy wants you to believe. That God's going to come at you. No, he's just waiting for you to come to him and say, I confess. Which ultimately introduces the third wrestling match, and that is our wrestling with God. And this, this is what I love. Like what, what Ashley and I get to do, it's just... It's unbelievable that we get to walk with people. Because here's what I know. You can go try it. You can go try to scratch the itch. You can go try to pretend your way. You'll be miserable. And here's what I also know. You'll be back. And I, listen, I'm not saying that to be snarky or sharp. You'll be back. I've sat with enough people that have gone and tried everything. Jacob went and tried everything. Tried getting the right marriage, tried making enough money, tried getting the the right job. He tried pleasing people. He tried everything, and he still found himself going, I need an encounter with God. Please, please hear this. Hebrews 3, you're going to soak through this on Saturday. Hebrews chapter 3. That is why the Holy Spirit, please listen to him. Today, when you hear his voice, listen. 
Don't harden your heart. Don't stiff arm the Holy Spirit. For goodness sakes. I know I need to grow. I know, I'm, I know I need to get better. I'm exhausted, Devin. My life's been in park. I, I've been pretending. And just as you're getting ready to take a step, here's the thought. But I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> what are people going to think? What are they going to say if I lifted my hands and worshipped God? What if I took a step towards God? Don't, if he's talking to you, don't. Harden your heart there. Where? Where you harden your heart. Where you know God's speaking to you and you still don't listen. Watch. You test and try his patience. Even though you're seeing his faithfulness. Even though you're seeing the miraculous. Even though you've experienced his provision and protection. You're still testing his patience. I saw it firsthand. I've experienced the goodness and kindness of God. And still... Digging my heels in. And God says, what do I do with them? They're always turning away from me. They refuse. Come on, parents right there. Have you ever said that? When will they do what I'm telling them to do? So I took an oath. And here's the oath. That you'll never experience peace in your soul. You'll never experience rest in your soul if you keep wrestling and denying and hardening Your heart, your soul will never be at rest. It's a wrestling match. The internal conflict will still be there. Or, and my goodness, I've been praying for one person. I'm telling you. Or, you could try something different. Or, you could take a step and encounter God in a new way. Two things I'm going to recommend. If you want to encounter God, If you're exhausted and tired. If you know I have no rest in my soul. You're going to love the first one. You're going to have to give up being in control. How many like that one right there? Control. I mean, Jacob all throughout his life, he always had his own solutions. I mean, even when he was going to God at times, he had already figured out the solution. He was just waiting for God to stamp his approval on what he already decided he was going to do. He always had his solutions. But what, he finally got to the place where he said, wait a second, I need an encounter. I need, I need to meet God face to face. And even then, God still had to go, wow, slow down, brother. Like, all of us have to get to that place, myself included, where we go, Okay, here's the word. It's surrender. And I know it's not a popular word. But when you do, there's a rest in your soul that only God can do when you do that. Sometimes the the most compelling thing that you could see is a transformed life that allows for you to go, wait, if they did it, I can do it too. So I thought I might share a story with you about my friend Amanda who finally said, God, you can have Control. My name is Amanda Toomey, and I've been attending Connect for about four years. I decided to go through Breakthrough because I was looking for answers. I was feeling very unfulfilled. Basically, I had been living my life on a repeat. I wanted to grow closer to God, but I kept going back to what was comfortable and familiar because of the fear of the unknown. I felt like I had so many things that I needed to change and it was more than I thought that I could handle. I knew there had to be more to life than this. Even as a Christian and having a relationship with God, I wasn't being intentional in my walk with God. And I think that that was what drew me in to breakthrough was just knowing that there is more to life. There's a fullness that we could be living in here on earth that I was not experiencing. Who I was a few years ago, even a year ago, I can just see how faithful God has been. He's changed bad habits, um, ways of living, my perspectives, the way I was thinking about things, and just by me being obedient and um, allowing Him to be a part of my life more, I've just seen how much he can do. 
I made a mess of my life and I broke myself down basically to depression, high anxiety, and I just, I didn't feel like I had what it takes. And now I can look back and see where God has worked in my life and He's prepared me along the way. He has given me so much peace and joy in my life. And even though I couldn't see the change, He has slowly changed me day to day. He calls you in the strength that you have. You think you're not good enough, but it was just like God saying, I just need you to be obedient and I'll take care of the rest and I'm gonna provide what you need to go forward. And so that's what I did. I just took that step of saying yes and I allowed God to just walk me through it. When we let fear get in the way, we are letting the enemy hold us back from what God wants to do in our lives. And Everyone needs some type, some type of breakthrough, whether they want to admit it or not. And I would just encourage you, if you want to start living in more fullness in this life and see what God has for you, I would just encourage you to take that next step of going through breakthrough. Isn't that awesome, everybody? Taking a step, not the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Let, let Amanda preach to you for just a second. You think you're not good enough. Someone just needs to hear that. You think you're not good enough, that God can't use you. You've parked your place at the pain, and you're convinced. I, but God says, what, look what Amanda says, all you need to do, we used to sing when I was a kid, is to trust and obey. No other way. What's God going to do? I'll take care of the rest. I'll provide everything you need. Watch what he says. So I took that step and gave up control. I allowed God to walk me through it. When we let fear get in the way. My sister's preaching now. We are letting the enemy. Some of you, you're letting the enemy hold you back captive from what God wants to do in your life. Everyone Everyone in some area of your life, everyone needs some breakthrough, which is why I'm encouraging you, do it. Take the step. Friday night, Saturday morning, January 26th, 27th, I'm praying and believing that someone will take the step. Everyone needs a breakthrough in some area of your life. So one of my jobs is to acclimate you to the ways of God. And I just have to teach you something about God. Like, if you want God to really move in your life, you need to understand this. It's brokenness that precedes breakthrough. You're going to have to learn that about God. Like, if, if you just come to God and you're like, I'm tired. I'm tired, God. I'm exhausted. I'm, I can't do it. I, I empty myself. How about this one? I repent. It's not a bad word. That's one of the greatest words you can. I turn. I can't pretend anymore, God. I need you. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of hiding. Can I tell you? God responds to that. Psalm 51. My sacrifice, oh God, is a broken spirit. Let me just say God is attracted to that type of spirit. He takes a step towards that type of spirit. And he's not looking for perfection. Listen, listen, listen. He's looking for honesty. Yeah. As, we, as parents, you understand this. We used to always tell our kids when they were little, it'll always be better for you if you come to us first rather than us finding out. Come on, parents, right there. Always better for you. What if you just led with, you know what I found with my kids? It's hard to despise honesty. It's hard to reject that type of spirit. And God says, I oppose those that don't do that, but I give grace. Like, if you want to know the secret to getting God's attention, here it is. Here it is. Humility and honesty. It's that simple. If you want to know the secret to being attractive to God, to encountering God, because brokenness precedes 
breakthrough. And some of you, you've been so committed to living independently. And our world says, man, go do it. Live your own life. But we confuse independence and freedom. They're not the same thing. Independence is doing what I want to do, but freedom is doing what I was made to do. And that's a complete difference, man. So you're, you're going to have to give up control if you want the wrestling to stop. Here's the second thing. You're going to love this one just as much. You're going to have to give your whole life to God. And if you do, we read it earlier, from there I sought the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my soul, and I found him. He wasn't hiding from me. You're going to have to go all in with God to get the best of God. And I know that may sound like extreme. I'm trying to pass you. I love you. If you want the best of God, you go all in with him. But some of us are like partial way inners. <laughs> I'll be there a couple times a month. Probably not going to do that breakthrough thing. Yes. Yeah, Connect group. Whew, that's going to be a lot. That's a lot. Serving. What? Prayer at six? Get a life. And yet you're wrestling. Fasting? What are you talking about? I'm talking about getting the best of God. And sh listen, sure, you can, you can get to heaven without doing those things. Wrestling the entire way. Striving the entire way. Straining the entire way. I'm just telling you, if you want... God's best. You can't just keep dipping your toe in the water until the temperature's right. You just got to jump in and go, God, I'm trusting. Trust and obey. This is, I mean, this has always been the case. Watch this in Mark. Jesus called the crowd. There was a crowd. And then he was like, well, who wants to be a disciple? You see, Jesus wasn't chasing crowds. He was chasing disciples. What's a disciple do? He would go on to say, anyone who wants to be a disciple has to give up control. You got to let him lead. You're actually not in the driver's seat. I am, he says. Don't run from suffering. When it gets uncomfortable, oh. Man, my kids were eating pizza the other night. Everything in my body wanted to come across that table. <laughs> like, just telling you. But I just said, I'm not giving in to my appetite because God's calling me to a dominion here. And I'm not. I'm not doing it. Follow me. I'll show you. Self-help is no help at all. You can't do it on your own. The way is self-sacrifice. If I want to encounter God. I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says this. I become my own. And, and our world's like, you live your truth, man. I mean, there is no absolute truth. You don't have to submit to anything. You just live your life. If I want to become my own, C.S. Lewis says, if I want to actually live in alignment with truth, I only get that when I give myself, and if it wasn't all capitalized, you would see that this A is a capital A. I only experience that when I give my life, myself, to the only one that can settle the wrestling in me. One more scripture, and then we're done. And you're going to soap through it this week. Isaiah 55, and I read this, and I thought, if this is for one, I just, man, I just so badly want this for you. Isaiah 55, you're going to soap through it a couple days. Come to me, God says, with your ears wide open. Listen, and when I read this, I thought, that's someone that's going to be there. The life of your soul is at stake. It's, it's that serious. It's that dire. If you don't change, if you don't take a step, not perfection, humility, and honesty. And watch, if you do it, God goes, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm, I'm waiting. Well, what's waiting for you? Condemnation. No, 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 what's mercies, love, and God, he wants to encounter you. But you have a role in the encounter. He's ready. He wants to respond. And some of us, we're wrestling. 
And the goal is just to get to heaven. But you're not living the overcoming abundant life that Jesus promised you here. How many, how many want to live with peace at rest in your soul? You want to live that way? I want that for you. Let me pray for you this morning. Bow your heads right here in the auditorium. They're online. I'm so thrilled that you're joining us. I mean, thank you. You're here in the room and the Holy Spirit is talking to you. This is so important. These moments right here. I mean, I've said a lot. But what's the Holy Spirit saying now? What's he saying to you? Where are you wrestling? Have you bought into the lie of a label that's been superimposed on you? Have you parked your life at the mistake? Does everything go through the filter of the pain of that moment? What... What do you only know that you're wrestling with? You can't carry it. You weren't designed to. You're going to have to have some humility and honesty. You're wrestling with God. For some of you, you've never taken that step. You've never fully submitted, surrendered. You've refused to confess. He's waiting. He's ready to respond with unfailing mercies and love. That's you this morning. Whether you're saved, secure in your eternity, you know you're wrestling with some things. You've been looking to, to settle it in other places. God wants to settle it. He wants to meet with you. For some of you, it's for the first time in your life. I want to pray for you this morning. If that's you this morning, I want you to raise your hands all across this auditorium. That's me. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. Good, good, good. Raise them high. You're wrestling. You're in a match. And God wants to settle it. He wants to bring a peace, a, a calm, a stillness to your soul. And in your own words, you don't have to use my words, but you say, Jesus... I confess, I've been trying to carry it. I cannot do it. I humble myself. I come before you with honesty and say, I need you. God, I thank you. I thank you for sending your son Jesus to do what only he can do, to be the substitute, the sacrifice for my sin. And I rest in that, God. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. Your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. I want to experience it for myself. Jesus, we want to experience you in all of your fullness. Come on, sing. You're good and I've witnessed it. He's strong. You're strong and I've witnessed it. Yes, you are, God. You're constant and I've witnessed it. And I'm confident I'll see it again and again. Oh, you love, you love us, Lord. Yes, you do. Oh, you're healing people, Jesus. You say yeah. Come on. Like you believe it. Come on. Declare these over your life. You're good. Oh, you're good, God. You're good. You're strong. Come on. Walk in the strength of the Lord.